Hey, what's up? It's your boy Juice. Lit a candle. It's late at night, obviously. Uh, so, we're here to talk about all the stuff that I'm working on and creating. I guess I'll call this side talk after like all the meetings, and it's like, hey, this is all the shit we talked about. So, let's talk about putting together budgets for a documentary. You could have all these plans, um, all these aspects. We're going to interview this person and this person and this person and this person. And then you always have that one person. It's like, hey, who's paying for all this and what's the budget? It's always a great question. So, let's see. I've been in production. Technically, I've been in production since about 2017, 2018. And I've done work from 2018 to present. And this is my first time doing a documentary. Why are we doing a documentary or why did I feel the need to do a documentary? So I could talk about the first one. We're doing a $30,000 campaign to raise $30,000 to cover 120 people for therapy sessions, covering their first three therapy sessions, $120 per person. This veggie shake's kind of nice. Now, the story is going to have two sides. One side, who came up with the idea, what's the team look like, what's everybody doing? The other side is, why do we have to raise $30,000? What's the healthcare system in the U.S. currently built like? How does this campaign reflect on the black community and what are we doing for ourselves or what are we able to not do for ourselves? Reached out to my boy, Brooke. Um, Makina Media. Makina Media. Haven't said that name in so long. Yeah, I think it's under Makina Media. If anybody else wants to check the stuff that they do on that side. They've done a bunch of videos in the DMV, commercials. Uh, they shot a majority of our content from 2019 until about the middle of 2020 when we did mental health pop-ups in Philly, a couple of pop-ups in D.C. They did a couple of um, events over in New York. Afropunk, Coop the Creator, was a part of that trip. And the reason I work with this crew is I just like the way their content look. Uh, audio speaking super strong, visually speaking, usually beautiful, stunning. Um, the seams that they put together is always on point, just, ah, it's always so good. But for the first documentary that's coming together, it's going to be an $8,000 budget. So how are we raising the money? Are we raising the money? Is this coming out of pocket? And how do you make that back? A, we're not raising the money. B, it's coming out of my pocket directly next year, getting a new job. Because, I mean, someone has to fund the, the dream, dream, sure, we'll call it a dream. Let's say project. Someone has to fund the project. And outside of funding the project, it's very important to remember, hey, that there's grants and stuff like that out there. So we should be applying to grants to see if we can get that funded on the other side, too. And then the topic of Netflix came up. I think it would be cool to get our work on Netflix because that would expand the scope and the recognition of the work we've done so far and the reach as to what people are willing to do. So when it comes to Get Home Safe, it was originally an organization that started on the foot doorsteps of me losing the love of my life to depression and anxiety. Now, there was like a crossroads of do you destroy or do you build? And if you do build, who does it help? And if it does help them, how do you recognize what help looks like in the community? And outside of what help looks like in the community, what are you willing to sacrifice? Does there need to be sacrifice? Could we just build this thing in one go? I really like this veggie shake. Since then, Get Home Safe has helped about a little bit under 140 people. Within the last three years, we've got 104 people, 140 people registered for therapy. Um, 
I work pre predominantly with black therapists because the community that I cater to are black therapists, but I do work with other therapists who are not black in case anybody wants any other options. And I just want folks to feel what does it look like when we bring the therapist to the function and outside of bringing the therapist to the function, how important is it for relatability? Um, outside of relatability, affordability. Outside of affordability, what is the reality of the person who is getting therapy? Do they have a roof over their head? If there's no roof over their head, are we providing that resource after the roof over the head? Is there food in the fridge? If there's no food in the fridge, are we providing that resource? Are we, are we working alongside the right people? And are we really helping our community? And does our community appreciate the work that we are doing and whatever that looks like next? So, to answer those questions, we've done everything but the food and the housing portion of what I described, but we have gotten the therapist to the folks. We have brought the therapist to the function, and I was then approached by Sean Cooper with an idea. Hey, I want to do this project called Hug em. I want to staff designs, dope shirts. You know, I can't give you the design reference, obviously. You'll, you'll see it, and you'll know exactly, like, oh, I recognize that shirt. And it's about, hey, is the community willing to, is, is the community willing to be a part of whatever we created? So does the community trust the community to do the right thing? Or is the community waiting for someone who either actually works in healthcare or who actually works in the government to do something? And how long are they willing to wait? So... I don't think this is an original idea. I think this idea could have been executed a long time ago, but I do think this is the first time hearing of people put together this kind of idea and see what it looks like. And then, you know, dealing with insurance companies. From a lot of the therapists and everybody that I've worked with, insurance companies are kind of what get in the way of people moving from therapist to, th to therapist. People moving from company to company, you know, are they with Kaiser, not with Kaiser, whose insurance is accepted, even private practices, they have to go through a whole bunch of insurance companies too, and sometimes you really got to bring it back into perspective, and ask yourself, is this supposed to be about the insurance, or is this supposed to be about helping people, and if it's not about helping people, what are the alternatives to insurance and affordability? Let's just keep that in mind going forward when it comes to one of these campaigns that I'm working on for the first documentary. What's the name of it? Oh, Just a Hug. Definitely looking forward to dropping this. And beginning of June, later May. We'll just say dates. Throw dates up there so everyone has a target and then see what happens after.